In this video, we will demonstrate how to test passive accessory intervertebral motion in the cervical spine. The purpose of PADVM testing is to assess the amount of rotational glide, the end feel, and quality of motion of the superior vertebra on the inferior. Additionally, it can be used to test for symptom reproduction. The patient is positioned in prone with the neck in neutral alignment. The therapist is positioned at the side of the patient and the force is lateral on the spinous process or posterior anterior on the transverse process. Biomechanically, for rotation, as the cervical spine rotates to the right, the inferior facet on the right moves posterior and inferior while the left facet moves anterior and superior. With this movement, the spinous processes rotates left as well. To produce a rotational pattern to the right, pushing on the spinous process to the left will mimic right rotation. Additionally, a posterior anterior force on the left transverse process of the vertebra will also mimic right rotation. Indications for cervical pavums include neck injuries, decreased range of motion, or pain. Some contraindications are listed here as well. For outcomes, we're looking for the quality of the motion, the quantity, the end feel, and also the pain response of the patient. The psychometrics for cervical pavums has not been thoroughly investigated. The psychometrics for pavums for the lumbar spine are listed below. So Colby, from my assessment, um, I see that you're having a little difficulty turning your head to the right like such. I'm looking over your right shoulder, like you mentioned. Um, so I'm going to do an assessment to see how well some of the bones in your cervical spine here, your neck, are moving on each other. Um, if there's any like places where there's limitations, it'll give me an idea of what we're going to treat um, going forward to help you get to looking over your shoulder again. Okay. So if you wouldn't mind laying on your stomach with your head right in here. I'm going to raise the table up. And what I'm going to be doing is using my thumbs um, to put a force on those bones, as I mentioned. So the first way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start at C3. And I'm just palpating to find the spinous process. And once I find the spinous process, I'm putting my thumb on the right edge of the spinous process and imparting a force to the left three times to assess that motion at that segment and its ability to turn to the right. Now I'm at C4, just palpating each time. C5 C6 and C7 so an alternative technique that I can do is I can impart a force on the left articular pillars in a superior and anterior direction to assess the motion to rotate to the right. So now I'm going to do that and move to the other side of the table. So once again, palpation is key to know which segment I'm at. So I'm on C2, finding C3. Find the transverse processes. So I'm imparting a superior and anterior force. 
at C3. C4. Etsy 5. And are you having any pain with these? No. Etsy 6. And Etsy 7. Okay. So, Colby, you can go ahead and sit on the extra. So, with all those, mm -hmm. you didn't have any pain, correct? No. Um, I noticed a smooth motion um, with what we call a capsular end feel, which is perfectly normal. Um, and the motion was pretty even amongst the segments. Um, so there might just be some general tightness, but we'll work from there to kind of loosen up those structures. Um, but there's nothing specific at a certain level that we need to pinpoint. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.